So I'm thinking actually, I might go for Atomic Habits next and save Schwarzenegger for the month of April. Honestly, I don't know who the fuck to trust you, my friend or my fault. I'm a ex bro, yeah, give me that claim as well. Hello and welcome to the third episode in my series where I'm reviewing the books that I read. If you haven't seen the other videos in my series yet, I would encourage you to take a look at the playlist that's on my page right now. We've read two books so far, got two reviews, and it will help you to understand the whole concept of this video series in a little bit more detail. So I'd recommend you go check out those videos first before you watch this one, but you don't have to. So in today's video, we are reviewing the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. And let me move my hand a little bit so you can see it in all its glory. There it is. Tiny changes, remarkable results. So we'll start off with my initial thoughts on the book. I thought it was fantastic. I thought the way that it was presented was really good. I got a lot of value out of the book. And I think the book did its job. It told you how to make good habits more easy to do. And it taught you how to make bad habits more difficult to do which I think is something that everyone wants. So before we go into the main concept and what was bad about the book and what was good about the book, I want to start off by going back to the rankings that we had for the other two books previously. So currently we have Never Finished at number one, which I believe I gave a rating of 9.5 out of 10, so very high. So will this book top it? It's gonna have to be a very good book to do so. And then we have Zach Perna's Good Influence at number two. So where would I rank Atomic Habits on this list? Well, you're going to have to wait until the end of the video to find out. I'm not going to rank it yet. I'm going to tell you guys all about the book, what was good, what was bad, and then I'm going to rate it out of 10 and I'm going to put it in the rankings list. So the main concept of this book was the four key pillars to a habit and it was how to make a good habit and also the opposite for how to make a bad habit. So the four key pillars to a good habit are make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy and make it satisfying. And of course, the opposite of that for a bad habit, you wanna make it invisible, make it unattractive, make it difficult and make it unsatisfying. So the whole book bases itself around this concept. It's got your four main chapters where it talks about making it obvious, making it attractive, making it easy and making it satisfying. And then within them chapters, it does also do the opposite as well to tell you how to make your bad habits harder to do. He also uses what's known as a habits cheat sheet. And that's what he continually refers back to and builds upon as you get further through the book. You have the four topics for the good habit, four topics for the bad habit. And every time he teaches you a new concept or speaks about one of those four key pillars, he'll add to the cheat sheet and essentially tell you what to do for each step to make it work for whatever habit that you want. And I really like the way that he did this in the book, but I do wanna start things off by getting the bad stuff out of the way from this book. So what was bad about this book? I mean, I had to think for a minute or two, you know, what actually was bad about this book? To me, it was a very, very good book. There was not really anything of the sort that I thought, hmm, I don't really like that. Apart from one thing, he promotes his website so much. There are so many instances in the book where he says, for more information on this, go to my website. I'm not going to tell you guys his website because I'd rather you went to my website, if anything. Check that out in the description if you want any programs and guides for health and fitness related stuff. But I can see why he would do it. He's got a lot of good stuff on his website. There's a lot of things in the book that do relate back around to the website and it will obviously help you with those steps a little bit more. So I understand the concept. Obviously he wants to help people further, but there's only so much that you can put in one book. And obviously with today's digital age, being able to do stuff online is always easier and a lot more simple. So. I understand it, but I just think he didn't need to promote his website so much in the book. I feel like if you mentioned it one or two times, that would have been fine, but it is a lot. I guess also a somewhat bad point, but I don't even really think that it is a bad point, is that there's a lot of chapters, or I guess a lot of sub chapters rather than chapters. You sort of have your four chapters for the four main key pillars. Of a habit but then there's just a lot of sub chapters in that and for me personally i read 10 pages every day and so i found that even though i was only reading 10 pages i was sort of coming to the end of these mini chapters and then starting the next chapter within the same 10 pages quite a lot so i'd rather it was like a little bit more spaced out but 
I wouldn't necessarily say that was bad. But then we go on to the good, and there was a lot of it. First thing I want to mention, chapter summaries. I thought these were great, and I haven't seen these in any other book so far. So at the end of every chapter, I believe it was every main chapter, he would go through and summarise what he spoke about in the chapter. And I thought that was really good, because sometimes, especially if a chapter takes me a few days, I will start to forget what got said at the beginning of the chapter. So circling back round and giving a summary at the end of every chapter, I thought that was really good. Next thing, actionable steps. There were plenty of them. Just little things as well, things that everyone can do, things that people can execute in sometimes a space of like five minutes. He gives you a lot of actionable steps so that not only is he telling you what you need to do, he's also telling you how you can do it as well and how you can start actioning these steps straight away which I like. It's something that David Goggins did in his first book that I really enjoyed. And although it wasn't like David Goggins' book where he'd wait until the end of the chapter and then say, this is what you should do, I thought that James Clear did just as good of a job by essentially just integrating the actionable steps into what he was talking about. And so he would say something and then he would give you an actionable step like, oh, why don't you make the bad habits harder to do, for example, by putting your phone out to another room, make the good habits easy to do by having things set up and ready for you before you go, you know, have your workout clothes out and ready to put on when you get home. And it was just those sort of things, those sort of actionable steps that are easy to do. And he would tell you sort of as he says about something. So I thought that was really good. Definitely a lot to take away from this book. I do also like the fact that after the end of every chapter, he goes back to that cheat sheet that I talked about before, where it has the four key pillars for good habits and the four key pillars for bad. And I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier in the video, but every time he would talk about something new, he would then put that into the cheat sheet. So for example, if he just finished the chapter on Make It Easy, you would then be able to see, as well as the chapter summary going over what has been said in the chapter, You'd also then be able to see the cheat sheet and that little section where it says make it easy would now be filled in with the new stuff that you've learned. So I like the way how he summarized and went back to his points and I felt that really made them stick a lot better than I've had in other books. And I feel like the good just keeps going. The use of visuals was great. I liked the way that he used a lot of charts and graphs to demonstrate his points. I feel like when you see data, I mean, I'm more of a mathematical person anyway. So when I see charts and graphs and data, that helps things sink in for me personally a lot more. But I like the way that he used all of that to demonstrate his points. I felt like it broke up the book nicely and I felt like it really did add to the points that he was making. Sometimes imagery can be a little bit useless, but I definitely think that imagery was used very well and it conveyed those points across a lot better. And just as a final thing, I thought it was very well written. Just a combination of everything that I've said with the summaries and the images and the visuals and all of that, I thought it was very well written. I, I struggled to say that as well, I can't lie. But I mean, if he'd have talked about his website a little bit less, maybe it would have been better. So let's finish things off. What you've all wanted to see this whole time. Let's do the rankings list. Let's give the book a rating out of 10. So in third place at the moment, we are going to have good influence by Zach Perner. I'm going to keep it at three. I thought that James Clear's book was better than his. In second place is going to be Atomic Habits by James Clear. I'm going to give it a nine out of 10, which means that David Goggins' book, Never Finish, is going to remain at the top which I gave a 9.5 out of 10. So we've got Never Finished, followed by Atomic Habits, followed by Good Influence. Atomic Habits was a very good book. I'd highly recommend you guys reading it, especially if you're struggling with habits, which I feel like a lot of people are. This is the book that I'd recommend for habits. I can't think of any other book that is better at just teaching people about habits than Atomic Habits is. I was very impressed with this book. So as I said at the start of this video, if you haven't already watched the other videos in this series, do make sure you check out the playlist on my channel. We're gonna to continue to add to it every single month. So that playlist is gonna be stacked by the end of the year, full of book reviews, and you guys will be able to see which books are the best and which books are not so good. Go check it out. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments. If you could tap that like button and subscribe if you're new as well, I'd greatly appreciate it. That all helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and getting seen by more people. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.